So I've had a lot of questions lately on what size tanks I keep my fish in. So on this fish room tour, I thought I'd uh, try to mention the sizes of the tanks. And also a lot of people have been asking what the uh, species names are because I don't always say it. I just might say, you know, hey, this is Magnus, my Umbi, or this is Matrix, or this is Optimus. And I don't really say what the uh, species is. So I'll try to go through all the tanks and um, let you know what size tanks they are and uh, what the fish that I'm keeping in them are. So let's get at it. All right, so we're gonna start off with the reddest latest pair right here. Um, they're housed in a 180 gallon tank and it's actually on a dual stack rack that I built. Um, another 180 tank, 180 gallon tank below that we'll get into in a minute. But uh, this is the male with a big nuchal cump. This is an Amphilophus species, Amphilophus reddus latus. And as you can see, he's quite the beast. Um, she's quite a bit smaller. She gets picked on a lot by him, but she, she does okay and holds her own. This pair, for whatever reason, only spawns a couple of times a year. And then I'm, if I'm lucky, I'll get some fry out of them, but a lot of times they'll eat them right away. I did grow out some fry last year in 2018 and uh, was able to uh, get them distributed in the community a little bit, so that's nice. There's also just a common pleco in here. But these guys are doing real good and um, she's actually, her tube's starting to drop and she's getting ready to want to lay some eggs, so we'll see if anything happens there. But again, 180 gallon tank, Amphilophus redus latus. Um, down below here is another 180 gallon tank and these are my uh, Hadiensis pair. They haven't spawned in a couple of months but I do have some fry left from one of their last spawns um, if you're looking to purchase any. But this is the male. He's uh, probably at about 10 to 12 inches. Female more around 6-ish, 7-ish, that type of thing. I really enjoy this pair and I'm um, really happy to have them in my fish room. Uh, the patterns and coloration on the male are just uh, outstanding, so really happy to have this uh, pair in my fish room. Uh, we'll go over here to the 300 gallon tank. This is a 300 gallon acrylic tank, the only acrylic tank that I have, the rest are all glass. This is an 8 foot by I think 2 foot footprint. Whereas the 180 gallons and 125 gallons are six foot. <clears throat> These are Chronoheros umbiferum or umbi cichlids. This is a wild caught pair. This is the male named Magnus, which if you've uh, been involved in the cichlid community for any length of time, you know that uh, Mike Mann raised these pair and then he got out of the hobby. So I uh, purchased them from him. The female is Beast back here. And as I've said in some of my prior videos, he picks on her quite a bit, but she does just fine. She does have some permanent damage to an eye from before I got her. You can see it right there. He's got some permanent damage to um, one of his pectoral, or not pectoral, but uh, one of the fins on the bottom there. I'm blanking out right now. But otherwise, um, overall, they're doing pretty good. Just to give you a reference in size, this guy is about 20 inches, maybe a little more, 22, something like that. I haven't measured him, but thickness wise, uh, it's hard to tell unless he looks at you straight on, but he's close to four inches thick. And I'm talking thick. Um, he's a big boy. He's old. Um, I think Mike got him in 2012, so that would put him at about seven years old. Still plenty of life potentially left in him, especially if he was in the wild. Let's see if we can get a look at the chompers on him. Probably not going to let us do it today. <coughs> Over here, I've got a, a dual stack of 210 gallon, six foot tanks. These are the old oceanic ones that are built like tanks. The bottom pane of glass, I believe, is an inch thick. The rest of it's a half inch thick. 
and they are heavier than all heck. These tanks right here are heavier than the 300 gallon acrylic by far. Um, but anyway, in this tank, what we've got is, I call it my junk tank on top. Right now I've got the silver arowana, which is about 20 inches. I've got a couple of, this is the male right here, um, um, Rio Blanco Moda Gwens, Red Tiger Moda, however you want to call it. Um, came from Sean Hyden's awesome line. Uh, there is a female in here. I took her out of my 75 gallon over on the other side of the room. She hides in this cave right here. Just trying to see how she might do with this male versus that real big male that, I'll, that I've got in the other tank. I've also got a Midas grow out or Amphilophus citronellus that came from the 120 gallon, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And then seven silver dollars. I did lose a silver dollar. These are red hook silver dollars. And then I got a nice pack of clown loaches here. Some of which are getting close to, or if not over 10 years old. Um, I think there's about 12 in there total. So this is kind of a fun tank, something that I haven't done a lot of in recent years, but um, just with kind of the way some of the things have been going, uh, I decided to kind of mix some stuff together and everything's doing just fine at this point. Arowana is really fun. He's got drop eye, but um, overall he's a great fish. I named him Beaker. Um, I think that's self-explanatory if you know who Beaker from the Muppets is just by looking at his mouth. The drop eye is pretty severe, but you know, I got this fish for free. Um, I kind of rescued it, that type of thing, and just uh, fun to have him in a tank as, a, as kind of a wet pet, if you will. Down below is another Chronoharis umbariferum pair, or umbies. These are F1, meaning that they're the first generation from the wild-caught parents, which are over in this tank. This fish here is the male, and this is actually offspring from Magnus and Beast. This is Optimus, and his female Matrix, which is unrelated from another pair that goes back to uh, a line that Mike Mann had back when he was still in the hobby. But I've got these guys housed in the um, other 210, so a nice seven foot footpr footprint for them. He's probably, 15 inches, 17, somewhere in that. Probably about two inches thick, maybe three. Getting to be a big boy. And I uh, really enjoy having them in the fish room. So again, these is, this is the 210 gallon uh, dual stack rack and seven foot uh, long tanks. I've got another spawn up here in the 75 gallon. Um, from, uh, this is a uh, Amphilophus um, trimaculatus pair, or trimax. You can see the male right there is uh, tending to some wigglers. The female's been hiding out in this flower pot cave. Uh, she does come out though, um, but um, he's been a little rough on her since the... They were doing fine um, throughout the spawn and even when the eggs were there, but once it got to Wigglers, for whatever reason, he started getting a little rough on her, so she hides out in there and she does just fine. So this is a seven foot tank, or excuse me, a 75 gallon tank, four foot tank, which is on a rack with uh, four 20 gallons that are used for fry and then another 75 gallon below, which in this tank is some Hadiensis grow outs that are about an inch. Some of these are spoken for, but I do have a few left. And then up above here are some Midas grow outs. I was gonna sell these, but I've decided at this point I'm gonna keep them uh, so that I can grow out some more Midas. Amphilophus citronellus are the technical name for these, or scientific name. I've got a few more Hadiensis in this tank that are a little bit bigger and a little older than the batch I showed you below. These are also probably keepers for me at this point. And then right here, you can see some super small fry. Those are the Feste that I mentioned when I was showing you the Feste tank. Um, can barely see them, but they're doing great. Pulled them and they're all seeming to survive and they're eating. 
I had put one of these uh, a small piece of a Sarah O'Nip tab in there and they took right to it. They're a nice uh, feeder um, food because they kind of stick together and you can stick it on the glass or just drop them down into the bottom, that type of thing. Nothing at this tank at, in this tank at the time, but if the Trimac um, fry that I talked about up here uh, make it, last time they didn't, the parents ate them, I'll put those down into this tank. Over here, we've got another dual rack with 180 gallon on the bottom and 125 gallon on the top. The 125 gallon is my Feste pair. This is the male. The female is hiding back here right now because he's been a little rough on her. I pulled the fry yesterday and since then he's all of a sudden wanting to make more. So he's been nipping at her and trying to get her to, to breed and so that's scaring her off a little. You can see there's still a few rogue fry that I didn't pull out. There's one right there that I wasn't able to get. There's another one over here. But it's a shame that I wasn't able to show you their coloration. I didn't do a video when they spawned recently. Their breeding dress is just phenomenal. I'm not sure if we can, we can kind of see her popping her head up back there. She's actually colored up pretty nice today. I saw her this morning earlier, right now, right before I came down to film this, he was chasing her around pretty good. So she's pretty stressed and hiding and he's, he's wanting to do whatever he can to try to get to her. Uh, no, I'm not going to be able to get a view of her right now. So unfortunately I don't think I'll be able to show you the female in this video. But yeah, that's 120 gallon Feste. Um, down below here is a group of Amphilophus trimaculatus or Trimax. Still on the fence on what I'm going to do with these guys. There's been no pairing up in recent months. I got eight of them in here. Um, like I've said before, if I can get that other pair that I showed you before this to successfully start spawning and stuff, they'll probably go in this tank and then I'll either start selling these off or move some of them over to the 210 gallon junk tank or, or do something. These are really fun to watch, but uh, there's just been no spawning or breeding going on. So again, that's a 100, 180 gallon tank and then a 125 gallon tank above. Um, I'm not going to get into these, but this is, uh, these are two of my shrimp racks. If you do like shrimp keeping at all, um, I do a lot of videos on that, so go check those out. 15 gallon racks of four. Um, two more 15 gallon shrimp tanks there. And then we'll uh, talk about the flower horn, the first flower horn. This is uh, Colossus. He is a uh, uh, Compha 9.9. Came from. Uh, I think it's called Flowerhorn Craze out in California. He's a good 12 inches. If you're not um, familiar with flower horns, they are a hybrid fish, which I'm not always into hybrids, but for some reason I got the bug with flower horns a few years ago and really have enjoyed this one. He's housed in a 90 gallon tank, which is another rack over here. And there's a 120 gallon fat boy below. These are both four foot tanks. Um, he's doing real good, has a really nice nuchal hump, really nice uh, coloration and patterns on him. Just a fun wet pet, um, has a lot of personality and uh, just always has been a, a real good, sorry about that glare. There's a rack system behind me um, and the lights are kind of causing problems. Down below here, we've got one of my two Midas pairs or Amphilophus citronellus, not to be confused with the red devil, which is Amphilophus labiatus. Um, they have not spawned for me um, since I've introduced the new female, which I've talked about in a couple of videos now, so I'm not gonna get into that again, but they're just a really fun pair to have, and this guy's just got great coloration and that type of thing. Um, I'm not sure on his age. I've had him for a few years now. 
I got him full grown from another local hobbyist, but he's a good 12 inches, um, pretty much full grown. And uh, she's, you know, nine inches somewhere in there. Doesn't have as great, as good a coloration as this guy, but she's still a nice specimen as well. And then my final rack in the basement is this four foot rack, three high with a 75 gallon on top, four 15 gallon shrimp tanks, and then another 75 gallon on the bottom. This is my other flower horn, which is a uh, red magma, which I think I said, but this is a King Comfa over here. So they're two different strains or breeds or mixes, whatever you want to call them. Um, he's doing real well also. The, both flower horns are males. He's probably, let's see if we can get a view from the side over here. He's right around 10 inches. He's not as colored up right now as he sometimes can be, but uh, still looking real nice. I've got him housed in the 75 gallon and he's just in there alone. And then down below the final fish in the basement is about a 12 inch, uh, another real Blanco Moda, um, Paracromas, <coughs> Moda Gwens, Red Tiger Moda Gwens as some people call them. He's just chilling in here alone. I removed the female and put her in the 210 gallon. Um, sorry about the water spots. I got to get at those with some vinegar, but we're just going to kind of wait and see how the female does over there. Maybe try to figure out what I want to do with him as far as either move him on or maybe try to get another female. I'm not quite sure at this point, but let's take you upstairs and show you the final few tanks. All right, so this is my other Amphilophus citronellus or Midas cichlid tank. This is a 125 gallon, more of a display tank. It's up in my office. Got a little shrimp tank below. But this pair has spawned a few times for me now. Never had any successful um, fry. Um, the first spawn, you saw some videos that I posted where they had a major cloud of fry. Um, the second spawn, which just happened recently, they ate the wigglers before they were even free swimming. So they're still trying to figure things out, obviously, but they're kind of in spawning mode again. Her tube's starting to drop. They're lip locking. They both have little small wounds around their mouths. So it's gonna happen. Um, this guy's about 12 inches, and um, this Midas and the Midas in the basement fish room are brothers, actually. So um, I believe they're F3. They came from a line that Scott Hoover had for a long period of time. Final tank, which I'm starting to show a little bit more now. <clears throat> Not really related to the big cichlids that I keep, but this is a 90-gallon planted tank. It's got a nice Monte Carlo carpet that really has started filling out in the recent weeks. It's got some Erio Vietnam growing in the rocks and then some Fissidens Fontanus at some of the points of the rocks. It's got some Cardinal Tetras and a bunch of cherry shrimp in it. Uh, the reason I hadn't been showing this tank, <clears throat> as some of you may have heard in videos or talking to me, had a major blackbeard algae outbreak. Um, and it just took forever to get it remedied. And every time I would get it remedied, it would come back due to my laziness or not actually correcting the problem. Well, I've uh, seemed to have corrected the problem at this point. I'm still taking precautionary measures as well, but at any rate, uh, the tank's looking well and I'm real happy with it once again. Well, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, I'll put a card up at the top that'll link you to uh, all my fish room tour videos, uh, they're all placed in a playlist, uh, so it's really easy for you to check them out. Um, if you're into shrimp or reef tanks, I also keep those, and I'll, uh, I've got playlists on those uh, on my channel as well. So check out some of my other videos and let me know what you think. Again, leave a comment below on what your favorite fish in this tour was. If you've got any questions or anything like that, I'd be happy to answer them. And until next time, thanks for watching.